everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Hannibal reaction. Alright, so today I'm going to be watching, reviewing, and reacting to season 1, episode 7 of Hannibal. So last episode I mentioned I, I was very, very pleased with everything that I saw. I felt that that was my favorite episode by far. And I saw a lot of people in the comments mentioning that this was kind of where they felt that the series really picked up, so to speak, um, which is interesting. I mean, I've been enjoying the whole thing up until now, so I think, I don't know if I felt like it really needed to pick up, but if, if you kind of mean that it's turning more in the direction of what we saw in episode six, um, where we get to see more and more of Hannibal's dark side coming out, um, <laughs> um, more than just him manipulating people, so to speak, but um, kind of his active other side and and how he's gonna be more directly involved in in things then then yeah I'm very curious to see how that happens um and and if he's gonna be more directly impactful to the cases that they are solving which is kind of what he was doing in the first episodes when he really stepped in and, and made his way into into the case with um Garrett Jacob Hobbs and becoming the copycat killer if we're gonna be going more in that direction, I think that's that's good, that'll be fun. So, last episode we got to see Eddie Izzard in a very interesting performance, um, and he was playing Dr. Gideon, who was sort of a, a, I guess, preview, an opportunity for us to preview the idea of, of someone of Hannibal's intellect kind of being in the Baltimore State Hospital for the Criminal Insane, and let us be introduced to Chilton, which was awesome. Um, and then we also got to see a kind of uh, a stand-in sort of Clarice character. Um, I was told that that they didn't actually have the rights to her on the show at the time, so I don't know if like they were hoping that maybe one day she would be on the show and then that just wasn't going to work out so they decided to throw Miriam Lass in there or what, or if they were thinking, you know, we'll just put a little kind of homage character here and then maybe someday in the future she could still be in. Not sure, but I liked that it was kind of touching on Clarice without actively doing so and having some changes. It was interesting. I also really liked to see the way that Hannibal was kind of playing with Jack, really torturing him into the idea that Miriam might still be alive and then lo and behold we end up finding her arm and her hand clutching the phone, so yes, a lot of Jack torturing going on in that episode. But I'm curious to see how this, this will continue with us seeing more of Hannibal's dark side. I'm very much liking it. <laughs> Um, so before we jump into episode 7, just a couple quick things. First, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's come out to support me on Patreon or is continuing to do so. Um, it really has been a huge help to me and it means a lot. Um, if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon, whether you want anything like early access to videos or extended reactions to certain series or if you just want to drop me a couple dollars just to, you know, say I like your stuff and I'd like to contribute, I would be very grateful if you were doing that. Um, if you can't, no big deal, definitely no pressure, but if you are interested, I'll put a link in the description below this video. And then the second thing I wanted to bring up is, yes, there still are some copyright issues happening with Hannibal videos. I'm happy to say that episode six is still up as of right now, yay. Um, but for some reason, I believe it was episode two, randomly was just blocked a few, a couple of days ago, even though it's been up for quite some time and hasn't had any issues, so I'm not really sure what is happening there. So I wanted to say that as of right now, I'm still sticking with just posting here and on Patreon, not setting up anything brand new, like a, a, a Vimeo account for the time being, because new episodes still seem to be working. Um, but again, if this episode ends up getting blocked soon, I'll probably go for another website and end up just linking through here um, if necessary. But I just did want to ask, you know, if there's anyone out there that hasn't had an opportunity to watch my earlier Hannibal videos, if you came on, say, late and they had already been blocked, um, and and you're curious, you know, maybe just send me a comment here, shoot me a message or something, and and... Depending on how many people are missing out, maybe I'll still try to set something else up somewhere. I don't know, but I, I don't necessarily really want to go through the process 
if there isn't a big demand for it or if everybody that's watching the Hannibal videos already got to see those, if you know what I mean. So if that's something you want, just, just do comment, do let me know. But again, if the new videos coming out end up getting blocked, I'll be trying to find another solution. All right, so I think that's enough build up lead in here. So without further ado, let's get into episode seven of Hannibal. Refers to a small group of pigs. That's hmm. how he sees his victims, not as people, not as uh, prey. Pigs. Hmm. And that's that's what he said about the, the, sixth victim, there the was girl. Also, sentence. two days later, the eighth is killed in his workshop. The Shrike case that uh, every tool on the that, um, board where they that come Hannibal was killed the girl and man, um, as with previous murders, organs were removed. The removal of organs and abdominal mutilations means someone with anatomical or surgical know-how there. Which is where Mary is last is going. Brutality. That's how she figured it out. An FBI trainee named Miriam Lass was investigating private medical records of all the known victims. When she disappeared, she's believed to be the Ripper's ninth, but no trace of her was found until recently. Two years later, when her severed arm was discovered, only because he wanted it to be. He had to mess with Jack. True to his uh, established pattern, the Chesapeake Ripper has remained consistently theatrical. Oh, that looks weird. <laughs> yep. It's been too long since you properly cooked for us, Hannibal. Come over and I will cook for you. I said properly means dinner and the show. Have you seen him cook? It's an entire performance. Lady, you're gonna regret this later. <laughs> Used to. And I will again, once inspiration strikes. The kind of force of feast, the feast to us to send us Oh my god. It's a dinner party, not a unicorn. Oh, but the feast is life. You put the life in your belly and you live. <laughs> Lady, seriously. You want me to wrap my head so tight around the ripper I won't go back to class until it's gone? You're bad luck that you're the best pal. Expecting another couple of bodies after this one? If it's the ripper, yes, I am. Don't let the Ripper stir you up. Mm -hmm. but the reason he left you Miriam Lass's arm is so he could poke you with it. Mm -hmm. Why not the rest of her? His other victims. He's not done torturing you. She wanted to humiliate in death, right? Like a public dissection. She was different. I was probably impressed that she was able to find him. Mm. He may be starting another cycle, Will. Ripper contacted you directly. If he was killing again, he wouldn't be subtle about it. He, he, he would just pick up the phone. Got a point. Any more phone calls, Jack? No. Look, there's a big ripper. It's not the ripper. There are too many similarities. There aren't enough. Is this guy is just but always arguing cuts, with Will? Stabs, anatomical knowledge, dissection skills, mutilation, organs removed, victim clothes on display. We got 22 signature components, all attributable to the same killer. 22 possible signature components. <laughs> it's the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That guy's a dick. Are you sure? So more or less. Tell me why you're sure. River left a victim in a church pew using his tongue as a page marker in the Bible he was holding. This is a man. This is a medical student or a trainee or someone trying to make an extra buck in a back alley surgery and it went bad. And actively bad. We'll catch the river. Eventually. Yeah, well, I want to catch him now. to shoot him because I'm going to do that. You can't just jack up the law and get underneath it, can't I? No, oh, Jack. Tell 
me how you see the Ripper will. I see him as one of those pitiful things sometimes born in hospitals. Hmm. They feed it, keep it warm, but they don't put it on machines. I'm excited to see her. What would be the point of the list? I love Julian Anderson. Well, one of us has to be honest. I'm honest. Not perfectly. As honest as anyone. Not really. I have conversations with a version of you. Huh. And hope that the actual you gets what he needs. Version of me. Naturally, I respect its meticulous construction. But you are wearing a very well-tailored person suit. Well, you refer to me as person okay. suit until your psychiatrist then. I don't discuss patients with my psychiatrist friends. Someone sees through him, well. Especially since I only have one patient who chose to ignore my retirement. Hmm. Patient who wears a person suit. Maybe it's less of a person suit and more of a human veil. Hmm. You feel like he likes that better? It must be lonely. I have friends. And the opportunities for friends. Are they really friends friend if they don't know who you are? You are my patient. And my colleague. Not my friend. This is interesting reversal. At the end of your hour, I will pour you a glass of wine. Nevertheless, you will be drinking it on the other side of the bed. Why do you bother? I see enough of you to see the truth of you. And I like you. Are you sure you see the truth? Red or white? I think something pink. Don't you? It seems like you're still diseased. I was asking a broader question. The disease is an infection. An infection isn't always a disease. Yep, that I think he knows true. that. You should just tell me now because I'm going to find out and it will affect your insurance if you lie. This guy's gonna get killed. For your business card, please. He's what being exceptionally rude. Oh, and is this what you're gonna make with him? <laughs> oh, it is, do it is. That's what it is, right? He's like, all right, let me look through my Rolodex of rude people and my recipe box. And this rude man will make this recipe. Always do. Always so living things, they have personality, point of view, agenda. They're pack hunters. Displaying one's enemy after death. That's his appeal in many cultures. These aren't the Ripper's enemies. These are pests he's swatted. Mm. The reward for their cruelty. Oh, he doesn't have a problem with cruelty. The reward is for uh, undignified behavior. These uh, dissections are to disgrace them. Mm. So it's public shaming. Takes their organs away because in his mind they don't deserve them. He's got you, Hannibal. He's figured you out. He doesn't know it's you, but... Huh. What's this? It's Jack Crawford's trainee. He's not like the other victims. The Ripper had no reason to humiliate Mary in the last. Seems to me he was humiliating someone. He was humiliating Jack. Did it work? It worked really well. Mm-hmm. You're honestly, you're all gonna be very upset in the future. Before we begin, you must all be warned. Nothing here is vegetarian. Oh, 
God. That was episode seven. Um, another very good episode. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, so I'll just start off by saying that I'm very pleased to see that they're continuing on from episode six, both with showing us more of Hannibal kind of underneath the surface um, and even in his private life. So we see, we see more of him, you know, as a therapist outside of working with Will and his own therapy which is fascinating all of his like dinner party stuff I i'm i enjoying that quite a lot seeing more of him um outside of just his involvement with will and the cases so that's good and again and his darker side obviously um so i enjoyed that i also enjoyed that they're continuing on the discussion of Miriam Lass and also the Chesapeake Ripper, you know, being Hannibal, that they're continuing to think about and talk about that going forward. I'm pleased, pleased that that happened here. So just a couple other things that I wanted to talk about from this episode. One, obviously the visuals, very impressive, very impressive here this time around. The scene with the opera singer, both the vocal cords and then just the way that she was presented as Hannibal was watching her, and then everything with his cooking throughout the course of this episode, um, and then setting up for the dinner scene, just gorgeous. The way that they're able to like create these like gorgeous images for stuff that we know is disturbing is very impressive, but so yeah, so it was visually kind of sumptuous to watch too, which was fun. And then another thing I wanted to talk about was the kind of um, fascinating way that this episode, in my opinion, both kind of made Hannibal look even even like darker and more powerful and more manipulative than than we've ever seen him in him, you know, with his getting more background information on the things that he's done and seeing him, you know, planning to kill someone and serving all these people's body parts in a feast to all these other people and playing with Jack. But then at the same time, I'm, I'm interested in the kind of opposite dynamic that we saw here, which I think is really kind of epitomized by Will trying to describe the Chesapeake Ripper as he envisions him to Jack and saying that he's kind of like a pathetic, like a pathetic thing that in a hospital that would be left to die. Um, I thought that was really, really interesting. And it seems like they were kind of going with that this episode too, that this, this opposite side of Hannibal is that there's something pathetic about him, broken, um, disturbed, and, and shouldn't exist. And, and you see that obviously not just shouldn't exist in like a demonic form, but in, in, again, the idea of the patheticness of it. And then you see that in the weird dynamic with him and his patient, his patient who wants to be his friend and Hannibal's like, well, we're not friends, you know, we're, we're a therapist and patient. But then he turns around and is doing the exact same thing with his own therapist, with, with uh, Gillian Anderson there, and she has to say to him, well, we're not friends, you're my patient. And you can see kind of this look on his face, like he's, he's disappointed about this. And it makes you think about like all of his, his dynamics with Will and the way that, even the way that he looked like so disappointed and sad when he realized that Will wasn't showing up for therapy, and then he went and sought him out, like he's, the interesting idea here of, of Hannibal actually, you know, being lonely despite all of the, the things about him where he's this so massively intelligent and, and manipulative and in many ways powerful and dangerous force of a person, there is something like sad about him and Will is able to see that and his therapist is able to see that and you wonder, you know, is there also an element of Hannibal like sort of understanding himself and like you always get the sense that he's he's self-aware of what he is obviously and he's not ashamed of it in any way shape or form in fact he he seems to th i mean he obviously thinks that he's better um and superior to most people but but then you wonder if there's some parts of him that doesn't really understand himself like you saw the interaction with him and will and and hannibal saying <clears throat> Oh, so the Ripper, you know, he's chosen these victims um, for the 
for their cruelty and and will is saying that it's not it's not really about them being cruel you know the ripper's fine with cruelty look at how cruel he is and the things he does it's um about he has like this this disdain for them he thinks that they're kind of like um I don't know, like they're, they're, and Ham says like unworthy. Um, so he's humiliating them. He's trying to humiliate them. And then, and then Hannibal has the picture of Miriam's arm and, and, um, Will is arguing, well, but he didn't want to humiliate her. And Hannibal says, well, this looks humiliating, right? And Will says, well, yeah, but he's trying to humiliate Jack, not, not the victim. And on, on the one hand, I think you could read that whole scene, which I thought was just great, wonderful to watch and fascinating, as Hannibal just kind of like poking at Will and trying to prod him to figure more stuff out or to see what it is he knows. And I think there's some element of that there. But I also do wonder if there's some element of it of where Hannibal maybe isn't like fully and totally conscious of the things that he himself is doing and all of the underlying reasons behind it. And so then he's maybe actually learning some things about himself from listening to Will, which I think I think that that would be a really cool way of, of looking at that too, if that was the case. And that would um, definitely increase the likelihood, I feel, that, that Hannibal, you know, would feel like he likes Will in some way, like he respects Will for his ability to like see these things. Um, yeah. I don't know. So, so it was a really good and interesting episode, and I like that thinking about that that two different opposing views of Hannibal showing through. And I hope we get to see more of Gillian Anderson. I'm very curious to see more of that dynamic. <laughs> um, all right. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up there for today. So if you have any questions or comments for me, please do feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Other than that, I'll just say thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.